Hi everybody, how you doing today? Well today I want to discuss a little bit about the JPEG format and the RAW format. And it's basically uh, all last year I shot mainly JPEG out of the uh, FC300. And I got some really good pictures. I mean, really uh, colorful, uh, sharp, great pictures. But I also want to tell you, when you go to process a JPEG picture, let's say you got the lighting a little off or you got your highlights a little too high and you want to take it into your photo uh, software to adjust it a little bit. And this is where the JPEG kind of falls apart. And I'm not saying it, it's not good, but it's lost a lot of its data. When I shoot a JPEG picture, it shows up about six megabytes on my software. And when I look at a raw picture, it's about 15 megabytes. So the camera has taken away 10 megabytes of data from the JPEG picture to make it like it is. So what happens is what I found, uh, especially if I want to sharpen or put some contrast or certain parameters that I want to put in my picture, uh, the JPEG picture, I would start to get banding in the background depending on how rich the colors were or how much contrast to saturation there was. And uh, I'm gonna show you a few pictures um, that I will be going through. I actually am gonna be testing some screen record software I bought. So I thought this is a good time to do it. And uh, I'm gonna show you the, uh, the problems that I had about processing JPEG pictures. And that's why I'm going to kind of be going to RAW more than I ever have before. Yeah, so um, um, <laughs> lost a thought there. But I will be um, showing you in the screen record in some of the pictures of what I've noticed. RAW has more information. It's just like your camera. If it's a half inch sensor, that's all the horsepower it's going to have. But also, I'm going to tell you the positive things about raw pictures in this camera. The raw picture is about 15 megabytes and the JPEG is about uh, almost 6 megabytes. At least that's the average. And also, if you have a 128 gigabyte SD card, uh, you can hold 8,500 raw pictures on that SD card. That's how many you can shoot. So that's a really good thing for this camera because it's a 12 megapixel camera. And if you have JPEG, you can hold 25,000 pictures at six megabytes on this 128 gigabyte SD card. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to my uh, my screen recorder and hopefully everything will turn out good, but I'll still be talking to you. Hi everybody, how you doing? So what I'm going to show you in these two pictures here, this is a JPEG, not processed. This is a RAW, not processed, straight out of camera. And what I want to show you here is the halo. Um, I don't know if they call it something else, but this is what I've seen. And I'm really gonna blow these pictures up big, probably, uh, you know, bigger than I normally do. And if you look here, right along this edge, this is what I call the halo. And it's usually on the side that the sun is not usually shining on, or it could be at a different, uh, angle like noon or three or nine o'clock but you get these what I call halos and this is in JPEGs you will see this mainly in JPEG pictures um, and like here you'll see the halo right here too I don't know if you can see that or not now these are unprocessed pictures and um, 
Now I'm going to take you to the raw picture, which is this one right here. And I'm going to show you the difference. Um, I can't see how much I'm zoomed in, but you can see well enough that there is no halo on a raw picture, not like you get on a JPEG picture. And this has been a problem when I shot JPEGs. You know, depending on the situation of the contrast, it had a blue contrast in the background, a blue sky, or even a, a green um, background. It always, uh, what I had to do was I had to use my blur tool and I would blur the edge to uh, remove most of this uh, uh, halo. Not all of it, just most of it. So I want to show you the difference between a JPEG and a, um, um, a raw picture when it comes to the halo. As you can see here too, you can see it on the bottom side of this stick. It's, it's not as pronounced as it is over here, but and then now if you go to the JPEG picture, uh, you will see there will be really nothing there. So that is the one good factor for a raw picture. And the reason it's like that is because you're losing information. Now there's a 10 megabyte difference between a JPEG picture and a raw picture. That's the difference in what's missing after it's processed uh, in, in a JPEG format uh, out of camera, or I'm sorry, in camera. And um, I'm gonna show you a few others. Um, here I have a raw, I mean a JPEG picture straight out of camera and a raw picture straight out of camera. Caught this little guy peeking at me. And uh, so what I'm gonna show you is, um, this is the JPEG picture. Now, here it isn't so bad because, but you can see the, the halo, okay? And if you go down to the raw picture, yeah, she'll see some uh, chromatic abbreviations here. Um, a little bit, but they disappear after you process the raw picture. Uh, your software, your Denoy software will, will clean it right up. And, um, and as you can see, there is a slight bit of a color difference. One thing I noticed about the JPEG picture is um, it is not as authentic in color as a raw picture. But you, you probably already know this. Let's go ahead and we're going to take it to uh, the next photo. <clears throat> this is a processed JPEG picture and it, you can see here when you process it it brings that halo out because you're you you um, you're adding like sharpness or contrast or maybe uh, uh, reducing the amount of color but anytime you process a JPEG picture after it's lost 10 megabytes of, of data it doesn't have much to work with so, but this is what I have kind of fought with over the last year was these halos and how I had to do it was I had to use a diffuser and just kind of brush them out, which made my processing a lot longer. Now with me going with raw, I don't have to do that. I mean, if you just want to click a picture out of camera, you probably will never see this. Uh, you can see already that this is a 16 by nine, uh, format um, and I mean you can barely see it um, you might be able to see it so this is a JPEG now I'm going to switch over to a raw that is processed okay you can see that right here how the colors are more authentic uh, you get more um, a little better sharpness because there's more details there there's more information and as you can see the halo is barely visible on the raw picture barely visible and this is at like 200 percent 
So um, it's better to shoot in RAW than it is JPEG. But the good thing about this is I notice now that I can actually process my RAW pictures a lot faster than I used to do when I was doing JPEG uh, processing. So, and the nice thing about this camera, it's a 12 megapixel camera. And, you know, you're only, you can get 8,500 raw pictures on a 20, 128 gigabyte SD card. And you can get 25,000 JPEG pictures on a 128 uh, gigabyte SD card. That's huge. I mean, when I go out and shoot, I may shoot a thousand pictures, maybe a little bit more, a little less than that. When I go out on that day, and that's that's just you. I could leave that uh, uh, in the camera for a week, shooting raw pictures, and I have to worry about it running out. So that's the the the, the blessing of a 12 megapixel camera. And as you can shoot, see, it shoots amazing, very sharp photos out of this Panasonic FZ300. I, if I had any other camera to take with me, especially on a trip, it has the zoom, it has a 600 optical zoom. I would not go any further than that because your picture is just going to start breaking down and you won't be happy with it when you get it home to look at it. Um, when you shoot optical, opticals, opticals, it's the same thing that those boys are shooting with their 12,000, you know, 100 to 600 optical. And this camera is very sharp in the center of its lens. Very sharp. I now have two of these FC300s and both are very, extremely sharp in the center. Um, plus I am getting more dynamic range out of the raw, which you will. I mean, it's just plain and simple. And they're just easier to process. Now I'm going to show you some banding that I was getting when, you know, I would shoot uh, JPEG. Uh, raw, you can get banding in raw. It just depends on how much processing you're putting into the picture. Because you're not working with a whole lot of data, you know, 16 megabytes. You know, you get a camera that shoots a... a, a uh, 30 uh, megapixels I mean that's huge you know you're talking twice as much you're talking almost 50 60 megabytes a picture so that's the advantage of a 12 megapixel camera is you don't you all you need is a 128 gigabyte SD card or even a 64 gigabyte SD that's still 4,250 pictures raw and probably about 15,000 JPEG so, um, banding, as you can see right here, you can see the banding going up and down here. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit more right here. This is the difference on a JPEG picture is the data has been removed. So wherever there's like a, a high contrast color here and a darker contrast, you're going to see that banding. And uh, it's the same way in blue skies too. If you have like a, um, even a bright sunny blue sky, you can get banding in. I, I get, it just depends. Uh, usually it's on a, uh, like a, maybe a cloudier day, like with overcast, you'll really get a lot of banding. So this is my, uh, you know, uh, gift that I want to tell you about because this is what I've had to deal with with the JPEG pictures uh, Nothing wrong with the camera. It's just JPEG. That's you know, it's a 12 megapixel camera It doesn't have that much information. I think it's 4,000 by 3,000 um, Is the format for it uh, on the 4k side so if you're processing your pictures now you can process jpeg pictures in the i mean uh, raw pictures in the camera and convert them to jpeg and i'm going to show you how to do this but one thing i found out was when i try to process some of the raw pictures if they weren't shot in a like, good light 
uh, you would, because of the noise reduction that the camera puts into the picture, can make them kind of soft. So um, I wouldn't recommend reducing the, uh, the noise reduction. I would keep it either balanced in the center or even maybe one up, depending on how bright your picture is. But I would start with the, with the center of the noise reduction and leave it there uh, if you're going to process raw pictures in the camera. And I'm going to have a video about this uh, when it gets a little warmer out. So I just want to kind of brought that up to you guys and uh, you know, maybe you know about it, but it's something that I've dealt with over the year. And I'm just kind of the conclusion that if, if you're going to process a picture, I would just shoot the raw. There's no sense in shooting JPEG, even though I, I wasn't like sure about the raw or the raw pictures, you know, how hard it would be. But I'm telling you now that when you have a raw picture and you process a raw picture, it's much easier to get it done quicker. So that's my take. Um, thumbs up for the raw. The JPEG is only if I needed uh, something quick to send off somewhere, then I would. But even then, I can still take the, the raw picture and process it in the camera and make it look really good. Anyway, I'll be bringing that up to you guys uh, to see how well it works as soon as we get some sun over here. <laughs> um, all right, back to the video. Thanks, guys. Yeah, so it's obvious, you know, we do have more information in RAW than we do JPEG. And this year, I'm going to be shooting definitely more JPEG, I mean, uh, RAW than I am JPEG. And I'm going to be going through and showing you the differences of what you can achieve from a RAW to a JPEG. And I know some of you out there don't like to process RAW pictures, but I would highly suggest you try one in camera and and check it out because it's you actually got highlights and uh, darkness controls uh, in your in this uh, processing so it's uh, you got sharpening contrast saturation highlights shadows um, in the raw processing so it's something to try but I'm going to be bringing a, uh, a video out on how to do it so you can you can see. And um, this year, spring is coming early. That's my predictions because I have seen a boatload of robins. So that's a clear sign that spring is coming early. Um, please subscribe, like and share and have a beautiful day. And enjoy the video because I have a special message coming for you. Thanks, everybody. Have a beautiful day. And I thank all my new subscribers for signing up, coming on board. And I thank all my seasoned subscribers for walking with me on this journey to awakening for humanity. Mm -hmm.
You are so loved.